This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Right now at 6 on Good Morning Indiana. Every time you get laid off, you got to start over, especially when you have a family. While jobs are being added across Indiana, under the surface, Hoosiers are also being laid off. Only on RTV6, the battle to find a replacement job and continue moving forward. And back in the woods, I found a newborn baby tied up in a Walmart bag. It's a discovery that sent shockwaves through central Indiana. This morning, the 911 call and the new evidence in the search for who abandoned an hours-old little girl. A mountain of trash at an Indianapolis apartment complex. We're live this morning getting results after residents called RTV6 for help. And the Bottle Works Project will bring new restaurants, shops, and apartments to Mass Ave. But we're finding out just how affordable these living options will be. It is 6 o'clock here on your Thursday morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Meredith Barry. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Our Lauren Casey is on vacation. Todd Clauston is standing by with another good day outdoors here in central Indiana. Yeah, you know, temperature's not bad. We're right on par where we should be this time of year. It's just not going to be as bright as it was yesterday. But yesterday, there wasn't even a cloud in the sky. Uh, so it's hard to repeat that. So let's get you going as you walk out the door on uh, this Thursday morning. And we're talking about temperatures that are hovering right around 50 degrees. So a little warmer than it was yesterday and what do you need to grab before you go well I checked the sunglasses for you there'll be times here today when we see a little bit of sunshine but overall it's going to be a mostly cloudy day and you just need the light jacket today with temperatures that are running a little bit warmer and the wind will not be as much of a factor here throughout the day today so as you get going here this morning temperatures will hold pretty steady in the 50s across the area with those partly to mostly cloudy skies and you can see the cloud cover as it's streaming through the area and there's some breaks in the clouds that's why I think some of you will have some sunshine for your morning commute. Remember, though, sunrise is not until after 8 o'clock here this morning. As far as any rain goes, still well off to our southwest. That becomes more of a weekend player. So this morning, here's how it plays out for you. Hour by hour, 9 a.m., 50 degrees, up to 57 degrees by the noon hour with those mostly cloudy skies. We'll continue to warm just a little bit as we head into the afternoon hours. More on that forecast in just a few minutes. But right now, it's time for another update on the roadways. All right, Todd, thank you. This is a live look right now at I-465 at US 421 Michigan Road. You can see there is something going on right there. There is a truck with the arrow asking drivers to get over to the left-hand mm -hmm. side, so just be cautious of that if this is part of your commute. Otherwise, no issues to report in this area. Hiring Hoosiers is about connecting you to jobs and taking a closer look at the issues impacting the workforce. The Hoosier economy is rolling along with low unemployment and companies adding jobs. But below the surface, hundreds of Hoosier workers are facing job losses in this turbulent global economy. Every job that I've checked into pays anywhere from 10 to 14 bucks an hour. And what does that mean to you? You hear something about 10 Well, to 10. that means I wouldn't be able to keep my house. I mean, I need what I'm making now to be able to pay my house payment and all my bills. And so, no, it would not work. Lisa Schultz has already been laid off from her job, paying about $25 an hour. The pink slips are coming in waves at Schneider Electric as it's on the path to closing its facility in Peru. That will impact about 300 people. In the next wave, according to state documents, under the 31 people will lose their jobs at that facility right before Thanksgiving. It is never easy losing a job, especially when other options are paying far less. I took my cue from Tracy Aikman that at the Elks Lodge in Peru, a game of pool is a good way to connect. Tracy was in the first wave of workers laid off from Schneider Electric, commonly known as Square D. I was planning on staying there and just finishing up my career. After 22 years at Schneider, he says it's now difficult to find a new position earning his old salary. But for you now, in this community of Peru, can you find that job that will pay you the $25 an hour? Can you recover? Or is it gonna be not, not here. I will have to go somewhere else. You're not gonna find any jobs around here that pays that money. You'll have to travel. You'll have to leave the city, go to Kokomo, Lafayette, 
Warsaw. The company is moving its jobs in Peru to other facilities across the U.S., as well as to Monterrey, Mexico. Opponents of the plant closing have set up shop across the street. I mean, it's, it's the CEOs, it's the corporate greed, it's the guys that are making seven, eight million, 14 million a year to sit back and say, all right, we don't need these American jobs, let's exploit another worker. Tracy and I continued our friendly competition talking about the future. In the end, he may end up using his CDL license. There's a shortage of truck drivers across the state and country. And in that spirit, he has a drive to do better and win. Good game, sir. Good game to you. <laughs> By the way, he won that game. The state did deploy a rapid response team to that area to get people retrained for other jobs and connect them to other options. The response to the state's efforts have been lukewarm. We'll continue to follow that. We did reach out to Schneider. They sent us a statement saying, in part, employees were eligible to apply for jobs at other Schneider locations. Schneider goes on to say that Schneider Electric and the union reached an agreement on the decision to close the Peru, Indiana manufacturing plant. Schneider Electric and the union also negotiated severance benefits for its impacted employees. So what happens next? The next big thing, of course, will be the company plans to shut down sometime in 2020. But coming up tomorrow, I'll tell you how some workers are leaving $20,000 on the table. Wow just there. They're not using that money, and we'll tell you what's being done so that they can use that money. More on this story on the RTV6 app right now. Seymour, please. Yeah, I need an officer over here at Jackson Park Apartment. Okay, what's going on? I, went, I took my dog for a walk over here across the street, and back in the woods, I found a newborn baby tied up in a Walmart bag. That is the call that came into police eight days ago when a woman walking her dog in Seymour found a baby left inside a plastic bag. This morning we can report new developments in the case. The baby is now out of the hospital and with a foster family. But now police are saying they have found strands of hair inside the Walmart bag with the two to three hour old infant and they're hopeful that discovery could lead to some answers. We don't know who they were from, but they were from someone other than the infant. Police are still trying to figure out who the mother is and why the baby was abandoned on October 15th near a fence off of South Jackson Park Drive. Seymour police say they have canvassed the area and looked for surveillance video. Any evidence collected from the scene, including the bag, the towel the baby was wrapped in, and anything the baby was laid on after the fact will be sent to the Indiana State Police Lab. If you have any information on this case, please contact Seymour police. The time now is 608. A pile of garbage at least 10 feet high has been cleaned up after RTV6 went to work for you. RTV6's Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning with more on what took so long to get it all picked up. And Kelsey, wow, what a difference a couple of hours can make. Yeah, definitely. So what we had here yesterday was piles of trash here, and now we've got this big giant uh, trash receptacle from Republic Services. So what we know is that they came out here yesterday after receiving a call from us. So you can see in this video from yesterday afternoon that the trash at the Overlook at Valley Ridge Apartments is spilling out. The container is full, and the garbage on the outside is taller than the container itself. RTV6 took those concerns to the complex's management team to learn why the trash was piled so high. The Department complex manager says they have called Republic Services every day since Monday and a spokesperson for Republic Services told RTV6 the trash pileup may have been due to a scheduling issue. Yesterday afternoon crews from Republic were out here cleaning up the trash but we're told by residents that this is something that they've had happen before. So RTV6 will continue to follow this story and make sure that the problem is solved for good. For now I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Kelsey thank you. Big changes are happening in the 800 block of Mass Ave known as the Bottle Works District. The old Coca-Cola bottling factory is being transformed into a mixed-use building. The massive building will be home to several businesses, a food hall, hotel, and eventually apartments. With rent prices rising and paychecks not keeping up, the Indiana University Public Policy Institute says people living on Mass Ave spend between 30 to 50 percent of their income on rent alone. We asked Hendricks Commercial Properties if the planned apartments would be affordable. 
I mean, I would expect anywhere between a thousand and three thousand dollars, depending on the size of the unit and where it's at. Now, there may be some other units that that have some subsidy to them that we can get under that thousand dollar mark. We'll keep checking in with Hendricks Properties to see if they follow through with keeping that rent affordable. A bizarre act of violence is now under investigation in Bloomington this morning. Let's take you to Monroe County to show you exactly what's going on. Police say that around 125 downtown parking meters look like that you see right there. Someone splattered them with bright spray paint and then filled the coin slots with foam. And that includes all of the meters on the downtown courthouse square. Police say the damage estimated at $5,000. People parking at the downtown meter spots in that area will not be ticketed until repairs are made. It appears investigators have identified the man and woman killed when their SUV plunged off a parking garage in downtown Indianapolis. The fire department released an update saying the coroner's office is in the process of locating and notifying the next of kin. The exact cause of the crash is still a mystery. The vehicle somehow went off the fourth floor of the Market Square Center garage on East Ohio Street. Right now, investigators say this appears to be a tragic accident. Time now is 6-11 and Marion County is working to make it as easy as possible for you and your family to stay healthy this flu season. Yeah, one person has already died because of the flu already this season. RTV6's Alyssa Donovan is live this morning at the Cathedral Kitchen where people can get flu shots today. Fill us in, Alyssa. That's right. This is one of several additional walk-in flu clinics be being offered by the Marion County Health Department this month, throughout the month of October. Now, the CDC recommends anyone six months and older get a flu vaccine. More than 110 Hoosiers died from flu-related illnesses during the 2018-2019 flu season, and health professionals across the state are working to keep people safe from the virus. Those most at risk include pregnant women, young children, people who are immunocompromised, people who have chronic illnesses, and the elderly. Along with Marion County Health Department, IU Health is also working to prevent the illness. An IU pharmacist is administering 4,000 shots to Hoosiers across the state at their places of work. Now, if you would like to come get your flu shot today here at Cathedral Kitchen, this clinic starts at 9 a.m. and it goes until 11 a.m. Those flu shots cost $20 for adults and they are free for children under two years old. If you can't make it this morning, that's okay. There's going to be another flu clinic later this afternoon. That's happening at Inglewood Christian Church. That's happening between 4 and 6 p.m. today. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. Thanksgiving falls later than normal this year. Ahead at 630 only on Good Morning Indiana. The problem, the late date is causing for retailers and potentially your pocketbook. Let's check it now with meteorologist Todd Clausen with the latest. Hey, Todd. And it's a quiet morning for us here Raphael, which is good news as you walk out the door and you get your Thursday going here across the area on this fall morning. We'll see temperatures hovering generally in the upper 40s to right around 50 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Overall, it's a decent day for us. We'll talk about when rain returns, though. Coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time now is 613. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Support National Business Women's Week. Getting a job in most cases requires knowing something about the position. And employers will also tell you that just as key is having those soft skills like good communication, being on time, good attendance. Our hiring Hoosiers guest career coach Lee Crick with the power of soft skills. I'm looking for some of those soft skills, right? So when you come to the interview, you're, uh, you're going to have your resume. Uh, you're more than likely qualified for the position. That's why you're getting the interview. And it's how do you present yourself? Um, are you knowledgeable of the organization? Uh, are you passionate about what you're interviewing for? Um, they're going to ask you, why did you apply here? You need to have that strong answer of why you're applying and why uh, it's not just a job. It's your career. It's your passion. From a passion perspective, it's how do they uh, connect them themselves in the interview when you ask them a question um, you can even ask them tell me something you're passionate about um, and you know are they giving you a standard uh, answer that's not full of energy then that tells a lot but if you just had that one position uh, it's in the it's that individual and they all had the same skills so skills uh, taking out of the the mix uh, what is that in the person that it was energetic uh, passionate about the position uh, really looking to come and make a difference in your organization 
A big thank you to our guest career coach, Lee Crick. For more helpful advice from all of our career coaches, you can go to our website, HiringHoosiers.com. It's going to be another great day in central Indiana, though a little cloudier than yesterday. But listen, anytime there's no ice or snow or right, we're okay. Or a minus <laughs> whatever, we're good. We're good. Right, Todd? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're in great shape. You know, yeah. yesterday we had the sunshine. Today, we're a little more in the way of clouds, but dry. That is the key word here for today and dry tomorrow. There could be maybe a stray shower or very light sprinkle in southern locations today, but that should be just about it. But unfortunately, as we look ahead to the weekend, Saturday, we're definitely going to see rain across parts of the area. Just depending on the track of that storm system, we'll be determining how much, but it's all rain. That is the good news. And then some showers hours linger into Sunday. So that 40% on Sunday is basically earlier in the morning. By the time we get to the afternoon hours, I do think we will be dry. It's dry this morning with a temperature sitting at 53 degrees currently at the airport in Indianapolis. Sunrise at 8.05 here this morning. And unlike yesterday morning, when temperatures were all the way down in the 30s in some locations, everybody's in the 40s and 50s this morning. So we're running anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees warmer. And that's due to the cloud cover that's in place across the area. So yesterday, even though we started in the 30s, we warmed into the mid-60s. Today, you would think with the warmer start, it would be just as warm as a finish. Not going to be the case. It's not a bad day temperature-wise. In fact, we're only a degree or two below normal. It's just not going to be the brightest day as you look at these temperatures hour by hour throughout the noon hour, 57 degrees, and then into the low 60s later on this afternoon. So here are the clouds that are increasing this morning. They're in the process of uh, gathering across the area. And there's still a few breaks here and there across parts of central Indiana where we'll have some sunshine once the sun comes up. But the overall weather pattern here is going to start to become a little unsettled in the coming days as a front's going to stall across the area. And that front's going to allow some of this moisture, which for the most part has stayed off to our south and off to the east, it's going to start to make its way into central Indiana. So this evening you have no worries at all. Mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures will be in the low 50s across the area, but still dry. As we go throughout the day tomorrow, it's a day very similar to today in the sense that we have mostly cloudy skies a temperature right around 60 degrees high school football games tomorrow evening as we start uh, the playoffs they will be in the 50s so it's a cooler but a dry evening for football and you can see as we work our way into 9 30 tomorrow as a lot of those games are wrapping up still partly to mostly cloudy skies now saturday morning starts dry if you want to do anything outdoors saturday maybe at the farmer's market the earlier the better at this point because the trend has been for the rain to increase across the area quicker throughout the day and that was a quick stream through all of Saturday but you noticed all the reds and the oranges that's some pretty heavy rain that's likely going to fall across the state this is 10 30 in the evening the rain is still coming down and then it'll continue into Sunday morning before it starts to eventually taper off as far as rainfall totals it's going to be probably the biggest soaking rain that we've seen on Monday had just over an inch of rain at the airport not everybody saw that but this looks to be about a widespread one to one and a half inches of rain. You notice some two inch totals on there. Uh, certainly going to be a possibility in some of those heavier bands, maybe even up to three inches of rain. So Saturday is trending wetter. Unfortunately, those showers linger into Sunday, but I do think by the time we get to the Colts game on Sunday afternoon, most of that rain should be over. The next week is partly cloudy, but cooler by Wednesday, a high of only 50 degrees. Dot, thank you so much as we take a look now at your live drive. Good morning to our friends in Frankfurt, New Whiteland, and Shelbyville. This is an in-dot camera at I-465 at Arlington Avenue. All looks well there. In fact, throughout the entire central Indiana traffic system, we're having a good morning. Employees at a Northwest Indiana store find a big surprise tucked Whoa. inside a donated jacket. Ahead in our trending six, their gesture proves there is still a lot of good in this world. We'll be right back. And we have more work to do. We are one week away from Halloween. And Raphael, get this. Okay. There is one town in Virginia that they are putting an age limit what? on who is allowed Come to trick on. or treat. Trick or treaters in Virginia, in Chesapeake, are told no one over the age of 14 can trick or treat. The law was introduced after an especially violent Halloween all the way back in 1968. Trick or treat violators are slapped with a spooky $250 fine. The original ordinance threatened lawbreakers with jail time, but we're told 
they've never really followed through with this. Let's just be nice to each other and enjoy the day. Be safe out there. Uh, Kanye West wasn't playing tricks when he donated money to celebrate his wife Kim's birthday. You see, West donated a million dollars to his wife's favorite charities. Kim, who celebrated her 39th birthday on Monday, was thrilled with the gesture. She took to Twitter with a praise for her husband's donation to the charities, which worked towards achieving prison reform. It probably doesn't smell like teen spirit after 25 years, but Kurt Cobain's olive green sweater will still fetch thousands at auction. Cobain wore the sweater during Nirvana's Unplugged tour. If you're interested, you're going to have to pony up some serious cash. The sweater is expected to sell for nearly $300,000. Now here's some good news for Popeye's chicken sandwich lovers. A major Popeye's franchisor says they'll start opening offering the sandwich again next month. I'm hungry already. The item became a huge hit when it debuted in August. Now to prepare for the launch, the company is hiring extra employees. Popeyes has not confirmed the date of the sandwich relaunch. I'm already in line. Well, maybe there will be rats in line at the drive through because <laughs> rats have started driving tiny cars. It's like real life Stuart Little, but scientists made this happen for more than entertainment purposes. They say it will lead to new treatments for mental health issues. Researchers say this can help doctors understand what triggers things like depression in humans and find ways for mental stimulation. So this morning, let's talk about who's your hospitality as we trend the six, of course, a pair of Valparaiso employees proving that there's still good in the world. Every day, there's good stuff happening. The workers at Plato's Closet found $7,000 yeah, that's right, $7,000 while checking a jacket that had just been dropped off. The employees put the money in the safe, then reached out to the jacket's owner and returned all of the money. The man says he hid the money, but he forgot where he put it. He says he always remembers to double check your pockets, but of course, in this case, he did not check his pockets. You're being asked this morning, double check all your pockets. You'll never know what you'll find. I can't even I find a buck. Think I, left, I think I left some money maybe in your wallet. Yeah. So you mind giving me that back? Yeah. You haven't been anywhere close to my wallet. <laughs> but I'm the way my key card to get in the door at work. I always get in my car. I'm like, where did I put it? I always go find it in the jacket pocket. Yeah, the you wore the day before. pocket from the day before. So I know where to go. But great thing about these ladies to do there. $7,000. The mentioned. payoff today, Todd Clawson outside, will be what? Uh, mostly cloudy skies here throughout the day today with temperatures that will be climbing up in into the 50s. So it's not a bad day for us. It's just not bright and beautiful like it was yesterday. 57 by the noon hour with high temperatures again climbing up into the low 60s. Todd, thank you. Halloween is right around the corner, so let's get a little spooky. Coming up, we have your chance to win tickets to see Here Come the Mummies live in concert. Stick with us. You won't want to miss this chance. We'll be right back. Nakura. The only name you need to know. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Eastbound and down, a chase reaches dangerous speeds between Indianapolis and Hancock County. We'll show you what happened that brought it to a halt and put a man in jail. I'm Kelsey Anderson and residents at a Southside apartment are seeing results this morning after a pile of trash more than 10 feet tall is now cleaned up. I'm Alyssa Donovan. Marion County Health Department is working to keep people safe from the flu this season. Coming up, I'll tell you where they're having a free walk-in clinic today. 6.30 on your Thursday morning. Thanks for starting the day with us. I'm Meredith Barrick. I'm Rafael Sanchez and our friend Lauren Casey is off till next Tuesday. So we hope that she's having a great day. It's going to be a great day in central Indiana. Todd Clausen. Listen. Yeah, you know, as you walk out the door this morning, I think the one thing you'll notice right away is a lot warmer than it was yesterday okay. morning when we saw the temperatures drop all the way down into the 30s. So we're running anywhere from 9 to 15 degrees warmer than we were at this time yesterday. And that puts our temperatures generally right around 50 degrees this morning. And a lot of that's due to one, a southwesterly wind, uh, but two, this cloud cover that continues to increase. So that's kind of the trade off. It's warmer, but skies right now are mostly cloudy across the area. With some peaks of sunshine or clear skies here and which will be peaks of sunshine once the sun comes up a little bit after eight o'clock. So it's essentially a dry day for us. It's not terrible. We'll just be dealing with partly cloudy skies as far as the rain goes that stays well off to our west. That's not a player unfortunately until the weekend. So it's a warmer start this morning as we mentioned. The problem is with the cloud cover around today our temperatures are just not really going to warm a whole lot. We're at 53 degrees by time we get to 10 a.m. 57 degrees by time we get to the 
noon hour. And then we'll go up another couple degrees later on this afternoon. More on that forecast and a look ahead to your Friday as well coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. We are taking a live look right now at I-65 at West Street. No issues to report right now. The morning commute will soon pick up more as more people head off to work. So just be prepared for that. At 632, we continue to follow a developing story new overnight. A police chase through two counties on I-70 leads to a man in jail. Metro Police say they noticed that the pickup and its license plate did not match. They tried to pull over that vehicle near 14th and Pershing. The truck sped up reaching at times 100 miles per hour going eastbound on I-70. Stop sticks were used to slow the driver down near the post road exit and that truck eventually lost a front tire. The chase ended a short time later in Hancock County near the Greenfield exit. No one was hurt. Later today, we expect to learn the identities of the man and woman killed when their SUV plunged off of a parking garage in downtown Indianapolis. The fire department says the coroner's office is in the process of finding relatives of the two victims. The cause of that crash is still a mystery, however. The vehicle somehow went off the fourth floor of the Market Square Center garage on East Ohio Street Wednesday morning. Right now, investigators say this appears to be a tragic accident. A pile of garbage at least 10 feet high has been cleaned up after residents brought their complaints to RTV6. This thing was an eyesore. It was just simply just gross to even look at. The trash overflowing and the people who live in that area, they told us that no one else was helping them out. So they reached out to RTV6. RTV6's Kelsey Anderson is live this morning with how our investigation and our involvement finally resulted in that garbage getting cleaned up. Kelsey? Yeah, guys, good morning. So not only was it an eyesore, but it stunk out here. That's what residents tell us. It was disgusting. It stunk. And that trash used to be almost 10 feet tall here. And now you can see it's all cleaned up. And now there's a giant blue trash receptacle from Republic Services. So take a look at this video. This is from yesterday. And as you can see, that trash at Overlook at Valley Ridge Apartments is spilling out of the container. And there's garbage on the outside. It's taller than the container itself. So we took those concerns to the complexes management team to learn why the trash was piled so high. The apartment complex manager says they have called Republic Services every day since Monday and a spokesperson for Republic Services tells RTV6 the trash pileup may have been due to a scheduling issue. Yesterday afternoon crews from Republic were out here cleaning up the trash piece by piece but some residents think it might be too late. Pretty sure there's probably already rats over there. <laughs> if not, I mean I definitely could see that being a problem. Residents here do tell us that this has been a problem that they've dealt with just a few times. This isn't the first time for this, so RTV6 will continue to follow this story and make sure that the problem is solved for good. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. Attorney General Curtis Hill is scheduled to resume his testimony at his disciplinary hearing today. It comes a day after a former employee testified that Hill propositioned her for sex. Kathleen Bowers worked for Hill when he was the Elkhart County prosecutor. She says that after flirting with her previously, Hill then asked her for sex in December of 2016, shortly after he won the attorney general's race. Bauer says Hill asked her again in a phone call shortly after the party where he was accused of inappropriately touching a state lawmaker and three other women. The state's disciplinary commission was using Bauer's testimony to show a pattern of alleged inappropriate behavior on the part of Hill. While he was on the witness stand, Hill was not asked about the party, but those questions could come later today. For more on the testimony and the entire case, you can head to the RTV6 app and click on this story. And this is an ugly legal fight. A meeting between a development company and the city leaders did not ease tensions over the future of the former GM stamping plant. The legal team for Ambrose Property Group and the city, they met yesterday to discuss that site. Now, earlier this month, the city said it would use eminent domain to take control of the land after Ambrose backed out of a plan to redevelop it. Ambrose released a statement Wednesday accusing the city of being, in their word, reckless. The company says the city offered to buy the property for $6 million, which the company says is far below market value. There is one confirmed flu death in the state already this season. Marion County Health Department is working to keep you and your family safe from the illness. Our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning at one of their walk-in clinics. Alyssa, what do people have to do to take advantage of this clinic? 
So it's very simple, Meredith. All you have to do is show up here at Cathedral Kitchen between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. this morning. Those shots are $20 a person, and they are free for children under two years old. So very simple. This Marion County Health Clinic is being offered at several locations across the, across the area throughout the month of October. And the CDC recommends everyone six months and older receive a flu vaccine. During the 2018-2019 flu season, more than 110 Hoosiers died from flu-related illnesses. Along with Marion County Health Department, IU Health is also working to give about 4,000 flu shots this year, doing over 100 clinics at workplaces across the state. It's a preventative health measure. We're trying to, you know, keep, keep Hoosiers healthy. Young children, people who are immunocompromised, people who have chronic illnesses, and the elderly are the most at risk. And again, this clinic is happening here this morning at Cathedral Kitchen. It's right off of Pennsylvania Avenue off of I-65, downtown Indianapolis. It's happening between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. this morning. And if you can't make it to this one, there is another one being offered by Marion County Health Department later today. That's happening at Inglewood Christian Church. That is happening between 4 4 and 6 p.m. tonight. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. The Pacers looking to regroup this morning after a tough loss on opening night. The Pacers had an 86 to 83 lead over the Detroit Pistons going into that fourth quarter, but they were outscored by 12 points in the final 12 minutes of the game. The Pistons win with a score of 119 to 110. The Pacers will now hit the road for a three game swing. They're back in action Saturday night in Cleveland. But hey, go Pacers. It's going to be a great season. She is one of the greatest athletes of all time. No doubt about that. But she's about to bring another dimension. Say what? Did you see that? Another dimension to a new sport. You'll see how she found a new way last night to light up the crowd. And only she can get the job done. And Halloween is right around the corner. So let's get a little spooky. Coming up after the break, we have your chance to win tickets to see Here Come the Mummies live in concert. Todd. All right, taking to the roadways on this Thursday morning, getting towards the tail end of the work week. And the good news is your morning commute is going to be a good one. You probably don't even have to crank up the heat on the dashboard. Skies are partly cloudy. It's warmer than it was yesterday. Temperatures averaging in the 50s to upper 40s, depending on where you are. We'll talk about the rest of your day coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTV6. Fix is working for you. At 641, breaking news this morning out of the UK. Police now say 39 people found dead inside a semi-truck near London were all from China. The bodies were found in an industrial park in Essex, which is about 18 miles east of London. The truck is from Bulgaria. Officials think it entered the UK through Wales on a ferry from Ireland. The 25-year-old driver of that truck is from Northern Ireland and has been arrested on suspicion of murder. Investigators are working to identify the victims, including at least one who we are told is a teen. Some members of parliament speculate that this incident is a case of human trafficking. There have been a number of similar incidents in the UK and in Europe in recent years involving migrants found suffocated in containers. A day after President Trump urged Republicans to get tougher in the fight against impeachment, it got a little bit crazy on Capitol Hill. Nearly two dozen House members, Republicans, they stormed a private impeachment hearing on Wednesday, bringing that hearing to a halt. Democrats, however, called it a stunt meant to distract from what has been damaging testimony against the president this week. Some Republican members even potentially violated the law by using their cell phones inside the secure hearing room where they are not allowed. The president and his supporters have called the impeachment process unfair. They want the hearings made public. Democrats point out that Republicans conducted multiple private hearings during the administration of former President Obama. By golly, if they're going to do it, do it in public. Don't hide it from the American people. You're not doing enough. You're not fighting hard enough. So this is an effort to please the president, to try to shut down the process. It's a stunt. 
Republicans were attempting to interrupt testimony from Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Laura Cooper. She's the first Pentagon official to appear before impeachment investigators. The House has approved a measure aimed at combating foreign influence in our elections. That bill is known as the SHIELD Act. It would require political campaigns to tell the FBI and the Federal Election Commission about foreign nationals offering illegal election help. Now, this all comes against the backdrop of Russia's interference in the 2016 election in an effort to then help candidate Donald Trump. President Trump's Republican allies in the House broadly voted against the bill and they say it could undermine free speech. Honda announced it will be going completely green in Europe. The car company says it will only sell fully electric and hybrid vehicles in Europe starting in 2022. That's three years earlier than previously planned. Honda says it moved up those plans based on confidence in green technology and regulations in Europe. To help make it happen, Honda is releasing six new vehicles over the next three years. Folks Volkswagen and Hyundai are also working to bring more electric models to the market. You have to see this, really. Come on. Last night, the first pitch for Game 2 of the World Series was thrown by legendary gymnast Simone Biles. But it came with a literal twist. One more time, Simone. Come on. You could do this. I shall do it here in a second. It's amazing. The standing back flip with a twist came right before the Houston native delivered the ball. Ah! You know, She's Meredith, just the best. She's an amazing, listen, I'm just so happy to say, USA, USA, Simone Biles, she's a GOAT, she's amazing, the greatest of all time. Well, here's athlete. the bad news, though, Roth. Simone's first pitch did not inspire her hometown team to victory. For the second straight night, the Washington Nationals got to one of the best pitchers in the game. Justin Verlander gave a tie-breaking home run to Kurt Suzuki in the seventh inning, and things just fell apart for the Houston Astros from there. Washington would go on to put nine more runs on the board over the last three innings. They win 12-3 and now have a two-game-to-none lead over Houston. Houston. Game three is tomorrow night in Washington. All right, Raphael, at a time when America okay. remains extremely divided on so many things, yes. it is good to know we can come together to celebrate a teenage boy just being a typical teenage boy. So in this case, it's Ethan Muller or Mueller. We'll have to ask him and call him. He lives in Texas, and he now knows the internet famous for this. Ethan. Yep, yep, he's internet famous for all of that. Technically, the biggest burger you can order at Whataburger restaurants in the South and West is a triple meat burger. But Ethan got his Whataburger in Allen, Texas to make him a sandwich with 10 beef patties and five slices of cheese. The 17-year-old scarfed down all that beefy goodness in less than 20 minutes. boy. Yeah, he's not so good. News. Here's the not so good news. His friend who shot that video and posted it to TikTok says the Texas size dinner apparently was too much for Ethan as it was, it all came oh see it all came <laughs> back a little bit later but I'm sure it was well worth now being the internet king look you see that one guy thinking what are you doing <laughs> you know wow there were so many things that I disliked when I was in high school yes. disliked about being in high school like yeah. drama and all that yeah. But it's those types of things Why? that I miss. Just little, we uh, used to do stuff like that when I was in high school, and uh, that's like the fun uh, stuff. We talk, should do that here on air. Talk See also, which one of the I three of us you can know, house you, a 10 burger, 10 you, patty burger. You can go up to Bub's Burger and you can get your picture on the wall. Okay. You know, I forget right. exactly what you have to eat. I think it's two of the big ones, okay. whatever they call it. But What's on your menu? Field Todd? trip. You got? Field trip for us. <laughs> All right. Uh, my menu is featuring mostly cloudy skies here throughout the day today and temperatures that will actually be pretty seasonable climbing up in the, to the low 60s. And while it's not going to be the brightest day today with the clouds moving in, it's dry at least as we get towards the weekend, it's going to turn very wet and temperatures are going to be averaging a little bit below normal. So yesterday we had to contend with a lot in the way of wind and it's still a little breezy out there this morning. But as you see here, the wind subsides as the day goes on. So wind becomes more and more of a non-factor for us throughout the course of the day today. And here are these temperatures. And when you walk out the door, uh, you probably don't even need that heavier jacket. You probably get by with just a light jacket this morning with temperatures in the 40s and 50s running about 15 degrees warmer than they were at this time yesterday. So our featured uh, dog of the day is Akella sent in by Holly. And Akella lives up in the Anderson area. So you may have seen Akella walking through the neighborhood there on a nice uh, sunny day. And it'll be a good walk, dog walk 
walking day won't be as bright as it has been the past few days with mostly cloudy skies, but temperatures 53 degrees at 7 a.m. up to 59 degrees by the time we get to 4 p.m. And of course, you can send your pictures to my Facebook page, Todd Clausen at RTV6, and we'll get them on there. Just got to be patient with me, I think. Holly sent Akella in uh, back in the late August, early September, so I got a lot of pictures to get through, but I uh, try to email you uh, or send you a message before I post them. So throughout the morning hours here, there's some breaks in the clouds, and as we work our way throughout the day, it's not going to be a completely overcast sky for us today. There will be some sunshine mixed in. It's just more clouds than sunshine, and eventually this is the rain that's going to head in our direction. So as you plan out your day tomorrow, we're up to 57 degrees. It's mostly cloudy and below normal, but for all the high school football games tomorrow evening, as we uh, continue through uh, now, what is the playoffs? Mostly cloudy skies, 52 degrees, and eventually 9 p.m. We're looking at a temperature that is going to be in the 40s, so it does cool off. Now, Saturday, rain develops throughout the morning hours. Rain on Sunday early, temperatures right around 60 degrees both days. So Saturday morning, the rain spreads from south to north across the area. And then throughout the afternoon hours, it becomes quite heavy across the area. And it continues through Saturday evening all the way into Sunday morning before it tapers off. And this is going to potentially be a soaking rain for us. We're generally looking over an inch of rain in many locations. Some areas, if you get in some of those heavier bands of rain, potentially could be over two inches of rain. So it's a real soaking rain for us on Saturday. At this point, I think the rain's done by the time we get to the Colts game on Sunday. That's the good news. Then Monday and Tuesday are dry with temperatures a little bit below normal. And then we'll continue that cooling trend into Wednesday with a high of only 50 degrees. All right, Todd, thank you. We are taking a live look right now at I-465 at US 421 Michigan Road. As you can see, there is a car idling there in the left-hand lane or on the shoulder. I can't quite tell on the shoulder, it looks like. Uh, so just be aware of that. If that is part of your commute, you can see traffic starting to slow down as it goes by that. There is also construction in this area, so traffic has been stop and go at times. So just something to be cautious of if you're headed this way. The time now is 6.50. We haven't made it to Halloween yet but the holiday shopping season, as you know, it's already here. You can expect an even more frantic shopping push this year, all thanks to the calendar. Our John Matteries has everything you need to know about the shortened holiday shopping season so you don't waste your money. Have you noticed when Thanksgiving falls this year? It is the latest date in years, November 28th, which is presenting a big problem for stores. So January 12th, with Thanksgiving and Black Friday a week later than usual, the holiday shopping season is six days shorter this year. So to make up for it, stores are rolling out Christmas deals even before Halloween. Walmart is starting its early deals and markdowns this Friday, October 25th. Among the Walmart early bird deals, a Vizio 55-inch smart TV, $398, that's a $100 savings, and a Samsung 50-inch 4K TV for $328, it was $428. Walmart's also offering free next day delivery on orders of $35 or more. What this means is that if you're in the market for a new big screen TV, you might not have to wait for Thanksgiving this year. Check Walmart's deals starting this weekend to see if Best Buy and Amazon are striking back with deals of their own so you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries. Good morning, Indiana. What's new, Pussycat? Well, the debate between those who love cats and those who don't like them isn't new at all. We'll show you coming up in today's Throwback Thursday. And it's the moment you've been waiting for right now. Your chance to win two tickets to see Here Come the Mummies live in concert this weekend. The show is set for this Saturday, October the 26th, at the Brown County Music Center in downtown Nashville, which is always beautiful this time of year, along with the music. All you need to do is be caller 6 right now Here's the number to call, 317-269-1459. Good luck. Visit the Hiring Hoosiers job board. It is time again to climb into our time machine for Throwback Thursday, yeah. and we have to find out first. Raphael, are you a cat person or not? So cats are smart and clean. All right. Well, believe it or not, 1982 was a very controversial year for cats. And that was the year the best-selling Cat Haters Handbook 
was published. Did you like my answer? It was kind of very political, yes, right? Yes, no, yes, no answer. Yes. No well, RTV6 found a place where cats were definitely, they were loved. Reporter Phil Ponce took us to the American Cat Fanciers Association show. It was held at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Definitely no cat haters here. And those attending the event had some interesting opinions about those who did not share their love for those felines. Why do so many people hate cats? Why do they arouse such strong feelings? I think it goes back to mythology, where the cats were a handmaiden of the devil. And they think they're sneaky. They're not. They're independent. They're too smart to do what their owners really want. They do what they want to do on their own terms. Gary Hollingsworth of Muncie, another cat worshiper, told me cat haters should take a look at themselves. People that don't like cats can be very interesting people. They must not be very deep. A little bit shallow, I would, in my opinion. So you think to like cats means to have a certain depth of personality? Yes, I do. Well, I must be very shallow then. The Cat Fanciers <laughs> Association is still around. They are co-sponsoring the Indianapolis area Cat Show and Adopt-a-Thon. It is this weekend at the Hendricks County 4-H oh. Fair Power Exposition Hall in Danville. And as always, our shelters are overcrowded. So whether yes, you're a cat a person or a dog person, yes. Just find space in your home yeah. and bring home a yeah. new member of the family. There's a companion for everybody, no there matter is. what your preference is. Exactly, so. exactly. All right. As far as your forecast here this morning, we're walking out the door to mostly cloudy skies, but temperature's not bad this morning. We're right around 50 degrees, 60 degrees by 4 p.m. Then as we continue throughout the day, you'll notice the clouds kind of gather and become a little thicker as the day goes on. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, a little cooler, and then a wet Saturday in store for us, unfortunately. Todd, thank you. We are back in 25 minutes. It's Anne throughout Good Morning America with news, weather, and traffic updates. Have a great Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow morning right here on RTV6.